What is going on world? I am the Hungarian experiment and if you've been following along my journey then you will know that I experiment and change a lot and when I started my uh, YouTube journey here in 2015 compared to right now which is 2019 we're almost at the end of November here I will be entering my fifth year on YouTube which is absolutely wild and crazy I can't believe four to five years of my life just went like that and I'm glad I you know, documented all this and shared my life and my journey and my perspective and my theories with you guys, but again, a lot has changed and my perspectives and my ideals and theories on a lot of things have changed. Now, in my first year of YouTube, I was uh, uh, taking protein powder. Over time, I realized, you know, the person I want to be, the person I want to represent and document my life out there with the world, I want to reduce the amount of additives that I'm putting into my body. And during that point in my life, around 2014, 2015, I already was heavily reducing my dairy intake. I stopped eating cheese, I stopped having milk, and again, for my first year on YouTube there in 2015, I was still experimenting and utilizing whey, uh, whey isolate, chocolate protein powder from Costco, and uh, in general, I was like, I think I need to cut this out. I, th I don't really think it's necessary. And yeah, so I cut that out of my system. And for the last three and a half to four years now, I have not been taking protein powder at all. And I basically eradicated it from my diet as well as milk, dairy in general, cheese, besides on my cheat days. Now, when you look at what protein powder is, which is basically the remnants from uh, the cheese and yogurt process when they're like creating it from milk, it's this fatty, liquidy, leftover stuff that in the past they didn't really know what to do with it. It was just kind of extra. But ever since the advent of bodybuilding and people striving to get more protein into their diets, uh, it became a, a popular thing. Now, I'm not gonna dive too deep into milk. As I mentioned here, I did on my first year of YouTube when I was going against milk, I wrote an article about milk, how I think it's fucking disgusting when you actually look at what it is. Like, we're just literally taking this white fatty substance from this boob of this creature that is very lazy, it's very slow moving, it's like it's just a weird concept to think that we're ingesting this fatty white liquidy substance that comes from this this bovine creature and in general again I don't I think milk and the food sources that come from it is fucking delicious ice cream cheese all that stuff is amazingly tasty and I don't really think that like raw natural organic milk or any food sources that come from that milk is bad for us as human beings but what I think is bad is how pasteurized things are now how the cows that we're getting this milk from are heavily sedentary a lot more sedentary before where they're literally just spinning on skids while we mechanically pump out their this fatty white substance from their boobs and along with that too the amount of hormones and antibiotics that these cows have all just to feed the masses I don't think that is healthy and I also don't think the protein powder that comes from this milk is healthy for us as well. But what I found interesting, even though I have stopped uh, protein powder for at least four years now, is that there are now articles coming out, there's now science coming out that is testing these protein powders that are finding that there's more than just this, you know, unoptimal stuff. So let's dive into this article here. A new study shows that many of the top selling powders and drinks may contain concerning levels of heavy metals such as arsenic, cadmium, mercury and lead and toxins like BPA, a chemical found in some plastic containers and food can liners. These substances have been linked to cancer, brain damage and reproductive issues. The new study from the Clean Label Project, which is a nonprofit organization that examines labeling safety issues, found that virtually all of the 134 products tested contain detectable levels of at least one heavy metal in 55% tested positive for BPA. These toxins accumulate in your body and can stay there for years, says Tunde Alkaline, a test program leader in Consumer Reports Food Safety Division. 
Frequent consumption of foods that contain them can have adverse health effects over the long run. This is not the first research that has shown high contaminant levels in such products. A 2010 Consumer Reports study detected arsenic, cadmium, lead, and or mercury in samples in all of the 15 powders tested. So, along with how unoptimal, how these, this milk and protein powder might have uh, you know, hormones and antibiotics passed on from the cow, they're actually finding heavy metals and BPA in this. That's crazy guys. You guys are ingesting this just so you can get a little bit more protein in your diet every day. What the study showed, the Clean Label Project measured the levels of heavy metals, BPA, pesticides, and other contaminants in protein powders and drinks. The contaminant levels were measured in a single serving of the products. These amounts varied, so the lab used the serving size listed on each product's label two rounded scoops. However, Jacqueline Bowen, executive director of Clean Label Project, points out that many consumers use protein products multiple times per day, which is true and I know guys who do this. One thing that I find hilarious as well too, and I've discussed this in other videos with how I do intermittent fasting, is I find it hilarious these guys who finish their workout and run to the change room and like get a protein powder going and mix it with water and start guzzling it down. Guys, if you want to get the most optimal effects from the gym, you want to give yourself 30, 45 minutes, maybe even an hour to an hour and a half after the gym before you have your first meal. At least that's been the best results for myself. If you guys are interested in learning more and you're new to my YouTube channel here, go check out my intermittent fasting playlist on my, on my main YouTube channel page and that should really help you understand the importance of fasting and why I believe it's important to go to the gym fasted. And why? Because you get a huge, huge boost in your growth hormone levels, especially in men, when you're, when, you, when you're just fasting in general, as well as training fasted. And over time, having increased levels of growth hormone also leads to levels of increased testosterone, which helps to increase your muscle growth. So, guys, like, stop guzzling this crap down. One, it's not good for you, and two, like, you need to give yourself time after the gym. But let's keep going here. So, overall, the products made from sources of plant protein, such as soy or hemp, far worse than those made from whey milk or egg, containing on average twice as much lead and measurably higher amounts of other contaminants. So, as I was saying there earlier, I was always concerned about the protein from milk milk because of, again, how negatively uh, we're treating these cows and the amount of hormones and antibiotics we're pumping in them. But as we're seeing here, plant-based proteins are also bad and have double the amount of lead and measurably higher amounts of other contaminants. Plant-based proteins may have higher contamination levels because the plants are especially prone to absorbing heavy metals from soil. Whey and egg proteins may have lower levels of heavy metals because the source of the contamination would likely be the feed given to the animals. Callan suspects that the animal's digestive systems diffuse some of the toxins. Again, that's just some of the toxins, but we have to consider that you're still getting that in your system. Also important, buying a product with an organic label did not reduce the chances of getting a contaminated product. In fact, organic protein supplements had higher levels of heavy metals on average than non-organic. And again, they're just saying here that it's probably because they were plant-based. Now, if you guys are interested in this article, they break down the worst and the best of the protein powders that you could be using. Now, again, I don't even care because I don't take protein powder. I try to get all my protein in from my natural diet, from whole, healthy, nutritious foods. But if you guys are interested and you're still considering taking uh, protein supplements, then definitely check out this list here. But we're going to skip down to do you need protein? protein powder. Given the number of protein powders and drinks on store shelves, you might think that Americans are woefully deficient in this nutrient. However, the vast majority of people get plenty of protein from the foods they eat. Protein products typically contain between 15 and 25 grams of protein per serving. By comparison, a 5 ounce container of plain, non-fat Greek yogurt has around 17 grams of protein and 3.5 ounces of chicken breast has 31 grams. 
Protein needs range from 0.4 to 0.6 grams of protein per pound of weight a day. So that would be about 64 to 96 grams per day for a 160 pound person. Now something that has been heavily discussed or what a lot of people recommend out there in the world as you know as trainers and fitness gurus is that you should be getting 1.5 to 2 grams of protein per pound per body weight. So here a 160 pound person uh, typically these trainers and fitness gurus would recommend that you get a 160 to 300 grams of protein per day. And this is why so many people believe that they need to be taking protein supplements and protein powders because there's just no way you can get that much protein in. Now, ever since I stopped taking protein powders, you know, on, on my first year of YouTube there, I've experimented with lowering my daily protein intake. So basically, I just haven't changed my normal food sources. The only thing that really changed for me is that I'm just not getting this protein powder in my system every day. Now, if you guys are following along my journey or or if you're new to my journey, go check out some of my yearly transformation photos. Year after year, I am putting on noticeable muscle mass without having to bulk, without having to get fat. And I'm still getting less than uh, you know, 1.5 to 2 grams of protein per pound per body weight every day. So, I don't think you need to be eating that much protein. And I don't think you need to be getting that much protein into your diet by supplementing it. So I agree with what they're saying here. Around 0.4 to 0.6 of grams per day, I think is good enough if you want to ensure that you're putting on muscle mass. And as we continue on in the article here, that's not a difficult amount to get in your diet if you include natural sources of protein such as legumes, nuts, low fat dairy, fish and lean meats. You'll benefit not just from the protein itself, but from all the other nutrients found in whole foods, which is again what I mentioned earlier on in this video. So even though some protein supplements have lower contaminant levels than others, you probably don't need to be taking them anyway. Additionally, supplements in general are only loosely regulated. Though they fall under the purview of the Food and Drug Administration, the agency classifies them differently from drugs. The companies that make and sell them aren't required to provide that they are safe and that they work as advertised or even that their packages contain what the labels say they do. That's crazy. So to wrap up this video here, again, I want to call into question if you should be even getting that much protein in your diet on a day-to-day -day basis and if you need to be supplementing this stuff into your body. If you've seen my video from the past called You're Not an Athlete, So Why Are You Eating Like One? I break down and I discuss that I find many of us believe that because we go to the gym several days a week for an hour or two, or we go for a morning daily run, or you know we play a sport on the weekend with the boys, that we are athletes and we, we need to fuel ourselves like athletes, that we need to be eating six to eight small meals a day. And I think we need to change this mentality. Unless you're seriously training for a sport and you are training for like more hours in the day than you are working. So you're training like four to five to six to eight hours a day. Then yeah, I think you need to be eating six to eight small meals and you need to be drastically increasing your protein intake as well as heavily considering manipulating your diet different than the average person. But in general, if you're watching this video, you're probably not an athlete. You're not training for an Olympic sport. You're not training on a day-to-day -day basis and pushing your mind and your body physically past its capabilities on a day-to-day -day basis. So, should you be taking protein powder? I don't think so. And I think, as we saw here in this article, that Along with the negative effects that are coming from how we treat these animals that are providing this protein powder, or as we saw here, even in the plant-based sources, there are other issues going on with this. There are heavy metals and plastics in these protein powders that we are ingesting into our bodies. And the FDA, the people that we trust to be mitigating and supervising these companies that are creating these uh, supplements for us, aren't heavily regulated. They aren't testing what is in it. And 
as we see here, there's lots of negatives in it. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope this changed your mind on protein powders. I'd love to know what you guys think, so go leave me a comment in the comment section below, and on your way down there, make sure you go smash that like button. Thank you guys so much for watching. I am the Hungarian Experiment.